So what's going on everyone? Um, we have the iPad Pro right here, M2. This is last year's model and we have the iPad OS 26 on here. Basically we're gonna show you guys today what it looks like and if it's any, you know, is it worth it to upgrade to it? Um, first of all, just a disclaimer, this is still on beta. I don't recommend anyone installing this at all. Um, it is pretty snappy on my um, iPad here, but it can get um, pretty laggy depending on what kind of iPad you have. We also have the Logitech um, keyboard here and the case. Now, first of all, again, we have that um, brand new liquid glass design that is uh, universal to all Apple devices. We're just gonna look at how you can add stuff here, like widgets on that side, for example. You can have your dates, maybe even a clock right there. Um, things that you need, you put your batteries on there as well. You can even add chat GPT, control your lights on there. You can do that right on the screen. You can also have uh, music and some notes or Safari on there. You can even add some shortcuts, which is really nice um, because with the Siri shortcuts, you can actually add any apps to be installed on here, even though it's not compatible just yet. Customize it your, yourself and then there's the weather. Um, this little screen up here, you can change the um, width, as you can see there, you can also change the looks of it like so. I think I'm just gonna um, keep it at uh, yeah, pretty clear looking here and make it like so. And then you can also drag this down. So to make it, you know, change it up a bit, right? And of course you can add a little widget up here. Um, add the weather, for example, if you wanted to. Um, your next step, for example, if you have events today, you can put that up there as well and that's it. Now you can change this, this is pretty typical. Change the color right there. And of course, you can um, put the depth effect on here, on this side. And then you can change this to be dark mode or light. There you go. And keep it at light right now, it looks really good. Keep it like that. And as you could see, it has uh, some depth on there. It's kind of fading in to the uh, wallpaper there, which is really nice. And then you have your widgets on this side, kind of floating around. Make it more personal for you. Now, another thing that you can do here is that um, with the gesture controls, of course you can have, you have the old gesture controls. But the other thing that you can add is this little window. And uh, at first it would pop up like this, if you want to make it a window or resize it to however you want, it'll actually change your look. So for example, if you keep it like this, it'll look like kind of like the iPhone. And if you have it like this, then you'll have the sidebar as well. Let's just keep it pretty small here. And then you could drag it right there so that you can put it on the side. Now you can do the exact same thing with the mouse. I'm gonna keep, use the trackpad here. Again, this is not the Magic Keyboard, this is the Logitech, and it still works for it. For example, the music right there, you can drag it to wherever you want, like so. Now, I'm not, I'm not used to this uh, little uh, dragging thing yet, but um, it's the first time I had a keyboard with an iPad. Usually, I don't use it with a keyboard, but this is, um, a great addition um, right there. If you see the mouse, um, let me put it on where it's more contrast. It's more of a point now rather than a blob before. So that's really nice as well. And then if you go up here, then you'll have the X minimize or maximize button right there. You can even choose um, if you wanna move it to the side or have it uh, at force or maybe just one side like so. Different options for uh, resizing it. Which, which makes it super easy if you're trying to customize your screen. Now let's um, put up another one here, which is the Safari. Again, if you're trying to browse, and this, this makes it so that it looks like a, almost like a real Mac OS now. It's really close to it, in my opinion. 
um, so that you don't have to have everything max because this is a 12.9 screen, right? Um, you'll be able to have more real estate and do more things on your screen, which is super helpful. Now, for example, if you want to minimize certain apps, and I, I don't want the music app, you can just hit the minimize here and it'll go back like so. It'll have that animation. Same with the Safari, for example, minimize it, it goes back to the actual app icon there, which is super nice animation. And then we're back again to the beginning. Now, if you want it back, it'll go back to where it was, where you placed it like so, it'll remember it, which is really nice. Now, of course, if you wanted two Safaris at the same time, this, you drag it out like so. There it is. Now, for example, you hover here and you want it on this side like so. Then you could take one of these and kind of flick it like that and it'll go to that direction. It'll have that maximum space right there, which is super nice. And if you want to bring up the tab up there, it'll you just hover your mouse up there and you'll be able to um, navigate through file, edit, view, history and all that on the taskbar up there. And then it goes away as soon as you leave it, which is really nice. Now, of course, you can also, there is an option here that, you, that I showed you earlier, which is this little four apps right like that. So now you have four apps going on here. And at the same time, you can bring up another app like Canva, for example, and have Canva right in the middle without any problems at all. And then you can bring up even the Notes app like that and have multiple, again, multiple uh, apps all going at the same time. Let's just keep going here with the calendar as well. Again, it's all in the background there, which is super amazing. Now you'll be able to, now you'll be able to have that uh, multiple apps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven apps all going at the same time, which is super great. Now let's do the messages app now. Again, it's, it's right here. You can move it or drag it around like so. Uh, just unlimited apps, I believe. I'm not sure how much we can add on to here, but it's amazing that we can add all those apps uh, going on in the background. Uh, before, <laughs> I think it was just maybe three at most or four at most, but now we can just keep going and just uh, fill our space on here which is super nice, it makes it seem like it's a Mac OS. Now apparently this is available for the iPad Air or even the iPad mini, so you don't need an iPad Pro to have this uh, set up, which is really nice. Now if you want it, if there's a gesture as well, if you want everything to go away, you just need to swipe up and everything is gone. And if you want to bring them up again, you can just hit that and open everything back up and you're good to go. Now go to the side like so, which is super nice. You can still open apps from your library like so. Now, for example, you wanted to customize your folders. All you gotta do is hold it like so. And then down here is the custom folder, customize folder and tags. Here, you'll be able to um, put a different tag as, as well as um, different um, little kind of uh, symbols that you can add on here. You can put emojis as well, which is really nice. Um, since this is a transitions, let's just do like, let's just do like three people like so. There it is. And if you put it on red, then the folder will turn red as well. So now what they added on the iPad OS 26 is also the background task. So for example, if you're trying to download something, this is a 1.3 or one gig file here. You'll be able to download it and it'll be up there before you had to be in the page. But now you can literally go back into the lock screen and it'll be there. And at the same time, you can take it out and do other things like check your mail, check other things. You can even edit 
and your background and your download would still be going on on the background which is super nice now DaVinci is not able to do this um, for example if you want to render something in DaVinci Resolve it doesn't work at the moment but they, I'm sure that one day they will uh, update that right now you can use Final Cut for that though and that will work so for those of you who are uh, editing a lot of um, videos uh, you don't need to be in the same page while you're rendering you can exit out of it and do other things on your iPad at the same time kind of like you are on uh, Mac OS now there are other things that they added like the high-res audio from your airpods which is really nice um, in my opinion I still wouldn't use it like so but it does help out if you're using it on zoom or if you're live streaming using your airpods you'll be able to um, have low latency on it and you, you'll be able to have a, a professional audio kind of like the FaceTime before where you can isolate your face and stuff now you can isolate your voice as well which is really nice addition now of course kind of like the iOS there's also the new app it's called preview here you'll be able to do some annotations and add in you know you can sign documents here as well uh, you just it's it's just another app um, that is also in the Mac um, I don't know why they just had it now but pretty much you can do the exact same thing on the files app before it's just now that it has its own app the other stuff as well they also added games on here which pretty much you'll be able to um, compete with your other friends and play with your friends as well you can discover new games here as well this is kind of like a step forward to the gaming sector uh, for Apple uh, leaderboards and whatnot um, as you can see it's having a hard time to load because a brand new app it's my first time um, opening this but as you can see this is where all my friends are what they're playing you'll be able to see that on there you'll be able to see new games discover new Apple arcades as well and you could be you'll be able to see uh, all the games in your library on here as well not really too thrilled about that but the rest of the things that I mainly talked about today the multitasking and the other stuff those are amazing so in my opinion um, the iPad is almost uh, worth it now to kind of replace your uh, MacBook if you have that. But aside from that, the other stuff is also the Image Playground, which is okay. You can use it on your um, other stuff that you can do on your iPhone. I've covered that on another video. Uh, you can do that as well on the iPad. You'll be able to call on the iPad as well. Aside from that, that's really it. I think this is the biggest update that the iPad have, have gotten. And I'm pretty excited once uh, the full version of this comes out. Right now, uh, we're still, you know, the UI is still kind of buggy or it's it's not as fluid as before. It's, it's a great addition for sure that Apple was able to add all this stuff, making it seem like a brand new iPad slash MacBook replacement. And that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, again, subscribe if you want to see more. I'll try to compare this on the Mac as well um, but all the features here are pretty much uh, just catching up to the Mac OS so uh, Mac, Mac OS Tahoe is um, not saying it's a pretty minute update but uh, it did get that li liquid glass design as well so that's really good but aside from that the other stuff is still pretty basic thanks for watching everyone I'll see you guys next time peace